welcome, welcome Central Christian Church. Who's excited to be in the house today? Put your hands together and praise God. Listen, we are so excited to be back in the building. We are so excited to see you here online. We want to welcome you and we thank you for spending your Saturday evening here with us this evening. Now, this, is a, this would be a great time for you to get your communion elements. So if you haven't already gotten communion, go ahead and get your communion cup now. If you're at home, make sure you get your bread, your crackers, juice or water or whatever you have at home so you can partake in the communion with us, all right? The other thing I wanna let you know is Due to COVID regulations, we do have to register online. So remember, every Saturday at four o'clock, we open registration on our website at centralwire.com. So immediately after service, you could go online and register for next week. So make sure you remember to register, whether you're coming Saturday or Sunday or both, make sure you register online, okay? Now, this will be a good time because I don't know about you guys, but I am so super excited to see your faces, to look to your left, look to your right, and greet your neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. Give them an air hug, a hip bump, you know, whatever you want to do just to let them know how much you appreciate them being here. And if you're online, this will be a great time for you too to shout out and say, hey, I'm here, or praise God, or whatever it is you want to say so we can connect with you as well. And speaking of connect, if you're new here today, or if you're new online worshiping with us, please go on our website and fill out the connect card. We love to stay connected with you. We love to know whatever you're going through, we want to go through it with you. So make sure you fill out the connect card, all right? Hey, you know that song, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Hey, if you're happy that God woke you up this morning and blessed you with another day, let's clap our hands. Let's thank God for being in our right mind. Let's thank him for our health and strength. Let's thank him for the opportunity to worship him this evening. Heaven 
encourage y'all to do at this moment is close your eyes and think about that blessing that first came early on in the Bible when Moses had Aaron bless the people of Israel and how true these promises still stand today to think that you can pray this over your life for God's mighty hand to heal you and for his gracious hand to provide for you and I want to I want to say this that that is not for your gain but for the sole purpose of God's work for his kingdom come, for his will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven, amen. And as we enter into this time of communion and offering, we don't provide God our funds from our work because he needs it. We don't give him a paycheck saying, all right, God, here's what I have to offer because I know you need it. He doesn't need anything from us. Our willingness to give God out of the fruit of our labor is because we're saying, God, we choose to trust you. And no matter what the circumstances might be, we can say, Lord, we, we ask you to crumble every lie that is going on in our own lives so that we can focus on the truth of the matter at hand. And that truth has a name and his name is Jesus. Amen. And that, and that Jesus chose to willingly give up his life for you, for me, for your children and their children and their children. So that that blessing was not only for the Israelites back then, but that blessing continues today as we seek to call on the name of our Lord and Savior, our King of Kings, the only one who is ever sovereign and ever will be sovereign. And we say, Jesus, we choose your way, your will, your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we're choosing to trust you no matter what. And in giving of my finances, even if I have very little, Lord, I ask you to bless this so that you can continue to do a mighty work through me as I seek to lay my life in your hands. And like I said before, it is not for our gain, but for his will, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And with that, I say an emphatic amen and amen and amen. And so as we take this moment to celebrate in what we call communion, as we gather together and we drink the juice, we eat the bread, use this as an opportunity to remember first and foremost all that he has done and all that he continues to do. And then use this moment as you're eating that bread to remember the sacrifice that he made trusting his father and the sacrifice that he calls us to make, trusting that same good, good Father. And that as you drink that juice, know that the sacrifice that he willingly shed on our behalf is the same sacrifice that he calls us to willingly shed on behalf of the name of Jesus. So as we go out from these walls, we are a people of love, and we are a people of truth, especially in the midst of circumstances that seem nothing but confusing. So I invite you, let's take a moment of peace. Eat that bread as you tear it open, it's in the top. And then as you tear it open again, there's the juice underneath. Take that and enjoy the knowledge that Jesus Christ willingly died for you so that we can have life in its abundance from this day forward and forever.
Daniel chapter 3. Go home and read it, Tina. It's not that long, and it's awesome. There's a story of some gentlemen, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, they were captives in a land that was not their own. They were prisoners. And in that time, there was a king, Nebuchadnezzar. And he made a verdict throughout the entire land that said, there will be no other gods but me, talking about himself. And he, he resurrected this big idol of himself for himself. And he said, you need to bow down to this idol. Well, these three brave men who loved the one true God said they weren't gonna have it. And the price to pay was getting thrown into a big fiery furnace. A fiery furnace that was so hot that, that when the, the guards went to throw them in, they, even being that close, died. And yet, no matter the circumstance that they saw facing, they chose to put their lives in the hand of a good and gracious and loving Father who knows better than we do and said, we trust you and our lives are in your hands. So if we go into this fire and we die, so be it. If we go in this fire and we live, thank you, Jesus. But either way, your name will be praised. And they went into that fire willingly. And what was amazing is when King Nebuchadnezzar looked in that fire, he saw not three men, but a fourth standing with them. Some people think it was just an angel, and I think it was the true King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I think it was Jesus Christ himself protecting them, saying, you trusted me with a little, oh man, I'm going to save your life and use it for my glory. So we're going to introduce a new song tonight called Another in the Fire. And the words explain it for themselves. But if this God that we worship is new to you, I promise that if you try to get to know him, if you seek him first, you will never, never be disappointed. Because there is always, always a way when there is Jesus involved. And so let's stand together and let's celebrate the fact that he is willing to go with us, go before us, and be that very blessing that we need every single day. Let's worship him together. See you. 
Shannon, thanks for being with us this weekend, either in person or safe at home with your family. There's a lot going on right now, and we wanted to take just a few moments to get you in the loop. The first big thing, and you'll continue to hear this, is that even though we're back in our building for corporate worship for those who feel comfortable, church looks a little different than what you may be used to. One big change is that with social distancing measures, we have limited space, and so you need to register every single week for any service that you'd like to attend. Registration will open each Saturday at 4 p.m. for the following weekend, and you can take care of that at centralwire.com. KidsWorks is available for ages four through fifth grade, but space is limited there as well. If you plan to send your kids to KidsWorks, just make sure you register them. We also know that there's still a lot of people who are part of the high-risk community, and so we want you to know that we are committed to our online church experience for those who aren't ready to join in a large group of people here at church. We're gonna to continue to stream our services each weekend if you can't make it into the building or if we happen to run out of space. And you can join us online for those at 5 p.m. on Saturdays or 9 and 10.30 on Sundays. Here at Central, we firmly believe in the power of prayer and we have a team of difference makers that are committed to lifting you and your needs before the Father. 
So if you're here with us in person, there are prayer cards on the tables as you enter and exit that you can fill out and pop in the box by the prayer well on your way out. Our prayer team will be praying over these needs throughout the week. And if you're online, you can also utilize our prayer request option on the website or on the church online platform. Additionally, there's a prayer tent set up outside on the lawn if you'd like someone to pray over you personally today on your way out. Okay, and lastly, Central Youth is coming back. CY offers youth services for students 6th through 12th grade, and it's all kicking off on October 4th with a brand new middle school service happening Sunday mornings during the 1030 service. High school will continue to meet on Wednesday nights at 7. Don't miss this awesome opportunity for your student to engage in their faith and find community. That's it for now. I know that was a ton of info, so make sure you head to our website for any details that you might have missed. Have a great week. Oh my God, listen, you don't even know how good y'all looking right now. It is so good to be back live and in person and seeing y'all. How y'all doing? Yeah, good to see y'all. Listen, if this is your first time or your first time in a long time, please don't make it your last time. We're just so happy to see you. I want you to continue to hang out with us. Uh, as the Lord allows, in person or even online. And listen, uh, online, even though you're not here with us, uh, we want you to know we miss you, uh, but we hope uh, that you are feeling our love and our energy literally permeating through this building, through your screen, and attacking you right now, wherever you may be, whoever you are, wherever you are, all over the world. We're excited that you're hanging out with us today. Oh, my goodness. Man, uh, how can the world change so much in eight months? Lord. I mean, let's just run down the list. COVID-19, uh, unemployment. I was about to say that. Election year, political posturing. Hey, hey, how about this? Uh, uh, worldwide homeschooling. Who's a part of that program right now? All right, all right. And, and, and the other real hot button issue that we're facing on our planet uh, racial and civil unrest. Uh, racism is, is, is one of the hot button issues right now on our planet. And everybody, I am so grateful and thankful to our leadership here at Central Christian Church uh, for being unafraid of tackling and leading in hard issues that face our world and being willing to face these issues from a biblical perspective. Because church, how many of y'all realize that Jesus has some things to say about racial and prejudice? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible has some things to say about oppression of rights, uh, omission of privileges and opportunities, uh, mistreatment of institutions of power and ruling authorities of an entire group. Uh, the gospel church has something to say about the systematic agenda to suppress and withhold an entire group of people from ever reaching their God-given potential simply because of the color of their skin. Yeah. But before I really dive into this, I want to make a statement. I want to make something perfectly clear for all of our people in the building and our people online. Are y'all ready for the statement? Here it is. Uh, we here at Central Christian Church, we preach and teach the entire gospel. I only got one. See, if you really understood what I said, uh, uh, everybody in the building and online would have been shouting amen at me. I said, we here... At Central Christian Church, we preach the entire gospel. Yeah, yeah. In other words, uh, uh, we don't have the liberty to pick and choose what we think is right or what we think is wrong and pick a side to try to stand on to influence your thinking or your feelings. Yeah, we'll lead at the Fox News and CNN. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we're going to tell you what Jesus has to say about the issues of our day. And if it's right, then it's right. And if it's wrong, then it's wrong. And we all need to just wrap our little minds and our feelings around what's real and what's true biblically. Because bottom line, if Jesus says it, we who love him ought to believe it and that ought to settle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here it is. Uh, Jesus said uh, the first and greatest commandment is that we ought to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, oh, I knew I was in the right place, yeah, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength, right? 
It's the first and greatest commandment. And then he said the second commandment is just like the first one. He says, we need to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, well, who is my neighbor? Well, your neighbor is the person that lives next to you and the person that lives a world apart from you that has nothing in common with you. That is your neighbor. And so uh, if it's right, it's right. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. And quite honestly, church, I want to show you some things that are wrong. Here's one picture I want to show you that's wrong. Now, this is a real tough image to see, but can you see the date, March 3rd, 1991? Yeah, uh, almost 30 years ago, uh, an African-American uh, motorist by the name of Rodney King uh, was pulled over, uh, unarmed, what did I just say? Unarmed, and was beaten by police officers uh, until they got tired. That's not loving your neighbor. That's just flat out wrong. Let me show you another picture of something that's wrong. Uh, This is George Floyd. Uh, Very, very uh, minor criminal offense. Uh, I understand he was resisting a little bit of arrest, but he was unarmed, and this punishment does not fit the crime. For a man to sit on your neck for over eight minutes until you choke out and you die. This is not loving our neighbor. And this really sparked the, the, the outrage in our country. But, but can I say something to you? I say if it's right, then it's right. And if it's wrong, then it's wrong. And I'm going to stand here and tell you that if I'm going to be outraged about this, I got to be outraged about the stuff on the other side too. Let me show you another picture. I don't care what the the situation was been, this is wrong. We don't loot, we don't break into private property, we don't steal, church this is wrong, right? I'm gonna tell you something else that's wrong. We don't walk up on police officers and open fire on innocent police officers. No matter how you may feel about law enforcement, no matter how you may feel about authority, this is not what we do. And church, I told you, right is right, wrong is wrong, and if we're going to be outraged by one thing, we got to be outraged by another thing. Bottom line, I told you, we preach the whole entire gospel here at Central Christian Church. And and we're going to encourage you to operate off of what Jesus says about it versus how we feel about it. Oh, see, 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 that's our problem today. See, our feelings, church, run everything that we do. We got people in here, that you, you know some folk like this, they walk away from their marriages because of their feelings. They walk away from good paying jobs because of their feelings. They, they fail to parent their, their children accurately because of how they feel. Hey, I don't know about you, the devil is a lie. I don't know about you or, or online, but I can't afford to live my life and, and base my decisions strictly about how I feel about it. I need to make decisions based about what Jesus says about it and line up my feelings with my faith in him. Amen. Yeah. Let me give you a passage of scripture. Uh, that's how we roll around here. Second Chronicles chapter 19 says this. It says, fear the and judge uh, with integrity for the Lord our God does not what? Tolerate, watch this, perverted justice, partiality, or the taking of bribes. I I, want to focus on this word partiality for a minute. Somebody say partiality. You know what that word partiality means? It's an old English word. That word partiality literally means prejudice or to prejudge, right? That's what that word means. And can I tell you something, church? Jesus literally died to put racism to death at the foot of the cross. And why did he do it? Why did Jesus hate racism and prejudice so much? Well, besides all of the other things that I listed earlier uh, in this uh, sermon, you need to understand that prejudice everybody, and I believe he hates racism and prejudice because prejudice, uh, it encourages and creates separation. 
And our Jesus church is not about separation. He's about connection. He is about relationship. God's plan for the body of Christ is not separation. It's unity. That's his plan for the body of Christ. And and I got to ask you a question. I got to ask you a question, very penetrating question for my note takers. And if you got a phone, you're going to want to take a picture of this screen right now uh, because I want you meditating on this question I'm about to ask you for the entire rest of the weekend and on through the week. Okay, I want you meditating on this question. Could it be possible, church, that the Lord has some amazing blessings, amazing opportunities, and amazing relationships that he wants to get to you and work through you, but he wants to send them through people who may not look like you? Oh, God, if I was in church, I'm going to say it again. Could it be possible online? Are you with me? Are you with me? That the Lord has some amazing blessings, amazing opportunities, and amazing relationships that he wants to get to you and work through you, but he wants to send them through people who may not look like you. Listen, we all struggle with this idea of prejudice. We all struggle with this idea of prejudging. I I know some of you right now like, Ray, I don't have a prejudice bone in my body, right? Right? We all struggle with this idea of prejudging people and stuff that don't quite look right ever since we was kids. Oh, you remember when you was little and your mom put that plate in front of you? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, and it was green and yellow and red, right, and orange. Vegetables, young people, vegetables is what I'm talking about, right? And you looked at the plate. And you looked at your mama, and you looked at the plate, and you looked at your mama, and you was like, that don't look like no McDonald's. <laughs> and what your mom said, she said, just, I love it, she was like, just eat it, just eat it, right? Just try it, right? You might like it, right? Hey, prejudging situations. Prejudging scenario. Watch this. Prejudging people based upon what they look like on the outside before you really get to know and connect with them on the inside. Friends, can I tell you that is simply not God's plan for our lives, for his church, and for our world. And so I got another question that I want to ask you as I jump into the passage. Uh, here's the question. What would happen if what we look like, our skin color, our nationality, wasn't the headline? but simply just a footnote. What would happen? Jesus uh, was trying to teach Peter this uh, in Acts chapter 10 when Peter was at his boy Simon's house. He was at his boy Simon's house in Joppa. Now, a little bit of of background on Peter. You got to understand that Peter was Jewish, and because Peter was Jewish, he was raised to believe that everyone besides the Jewish people were beneath him and inferior. You understand? Because Jewish people, you know, back in the Old Testament, they were God's chosen people. You know what I'm saying? You know, they were those guys. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. Go, go get my coat, please. They were those people, right? And, and, and if you wasn't God's chosen folk, I mean, basically, you was trash. You was a heathen. You were, they quoted, unclean right? According to the Jewish mindset. And so Peter was waiting on the rooftop of Simon's house, and he was waiting on Simon to finish up the pizza and wings because he was hungry. He, yeah, pizza and wings. Y'all, y'all didn't know that? I got to show you a passage. Okay, look at Acts chapter 10, verse 9. It says, about noon the following day, as they were on their way, uh, on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the rooftop to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the pizza and wings, did you see it? Did you see it? You didn't see it? was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Watch this, y'all. He saw the sky open, and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. And a voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. What did Peter say? No, Lord, I have never eaten anything that our, what? Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. Watch what Jesus says. The boy spoke to him again and said, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated how many times? 
three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Church, can I tell you, Jesus was making a literal statement about food, but he was also making a figurative statement about people. Yeah. And, and, and I need to show it to you. Uh, I, I'm going to say it again. Could it be possible that the Lord has some amazing blessings, opportunities, and relationships that he wants to get to you and, and, and through you, but he wants to send them to people who may not look like you? What church would happen if what we look like wasn't the headline? But just a footnote. Let me show you in Scripture again. Now, before I tell you this, Jesus shows up to this guy. He had just showed up to Peter's house uh, a day after. But a day before, he shows up to a guy named Cornelius. Cornelius, everybody, was a Roman centurion. All right, he was a Roman soldier. All right? And, and, and here's what you need to know about Romans uh, and Jewish people. Uh, they ain't like each other. They ain't, they ain't kicking. They weren't hanging out together. They weren't going to the game together. They, they weren't doing that. Okay? In fact, Roman rule was the law of the land in that time, and Romans walked around like they were the superior race on the planet. Does that sound a little familiar with what we just talked about? Right? Now, now, in this case, when you read Acts chapter 10, you'll find uh, that Cornelius actually had the heart of God. And so he was actually respected by a lot of the Jewish people in that area. But as a general rule, Romans and Jewish folk, they had a very tumultuous, just really rough relationship. Because the Romans felt like they were better than the Jews, and the Jews felt like they were better than the Romans. And meanwhile, y'all, nobody was connecting. Because everybody, prejudice doesn't do anything but keep people separated. But here comes Jesus touching a man, Cornelius, y'all, who was in Caesarea, and at the same time, a day later, touching Peter, who was all the way in Joppa, like some 40 miles away, and he was talking to them about each other while he was talking to them and while they had this encounter, right? And so when Jesus speaks to Cornelius in verse 4 of Acts chapter 10, just listen to what he says. He says, Cornelius, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. Now watch this. Uh, look at what he says to Peter in verse 19. Look at verse 19. Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't even trip, Peter. You see it? See it? See it? See it? For I have sent him. Why would Jesus say that to Peter? You don't think Jesus understood what was going on between the Romans and the Jews back in that day? But notice the language that Jesus uses. Notice Jesus didn't refer to Peter as a Jewish man to Cornelius, knowing the disconnect that Jews had with Romans. Notice Jesus didn't refer to Cornelius as a Roman centurion, knowing the disconnect that Romans had with the Jews. He referred to Peter as a man. He referred to Cornelius uh, and his soldiers as men. In other words, people whom God loved equally, men who were made in the image and likeness of God, human beings of all different colors, creeds, and backgrounds that the creator God formed with his own hands and breathed the breath of life into their nostrils. And if the God of the universe, church, who has the right and the power and the license to designate different colors and backgrounds to whoever so he chooses, he could title people the way he wants to. If God doesn't draw a distinction of people of different colors and backgrounds, then doggone it, who the heck are we to do so? Because in God's eyes, their race or their nationality wasn't the headline. It was just a descriptive footnote. And what if, what if we, church, uh, would look not at the color of people's skin or the town or neighborhood that they're from? What if that wasn't a headline, but it was simply a footnote? Church, God's plan is unity. And, 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 and everybody... Racism and prejudice separates, and our Jesus is not about separation. He's about connection. He's about 
relationship. Can I tell you that this message uh, connected with Peter? And let me show, prove it to you. We're almost done. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Peter told him, he said, you are well aware that it is against our law. Notice this ain't Jesus' law. This is our law for a Jew to associate or visit with a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Look at this. Look at this. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation, the one who fears him and does what is right. And everybody, if you read the end of Acts chapter 10, because Peter and Cornelius connected, an entire household heard the gospel. And they heard the gospel. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says they were baptized that day. Because they allowed themselves to connect with someone who didn't look like them to be used by Jesus to give something to them. And I'm going to ask you one more time, and I hope you meditate on this this week. Could it be possible, church, that God has some amazing blessings, some amazing relationships, some amazing opportunities for you? And he wants to get them to you and work through you. But he wants to send them through people who may not look like you. Is it possible? Or is it possible that you'll walk away from this message and you'll just continue to operate the way you've always operated? Thinking that God will do things the way you think he's going to do them. In your manner and in your timetable. Friends, if we ever hope to cure our world of prejudice and racism, it's got to start with us being honest about the prejudice and the biases that we all have in our hearts. As I told you earlier, we all struggle with this, and we have to have the courage to allow Jesus to do some surgery on our hearts. And and here it is. Uh, Listen to uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. It says, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? I can tell you who knows. But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. So here's what I want to challenge you guys with, those of you who are in the building and those of you who are online. I want to challenge you to do three things. Three things I want to challenge you with, and this is going to be super quick. The first thing I want to challenge you to do is reflect. Somebody say reflect. I want you to reflect on what's going on on the inside. Where did some of your thought processes come from? Did you, did you have a bad experience? Did you have a bad relationship? Maybe you had some bad teaching, right? And, and, and let Jesus deal with you regarding what's going on in your mind and your heart as pertains to people of other races and nationalities. Look at Psalm 139, 23. It says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. We got to take this stuff and we got to lay it at the feet of Jesus. But the second thing I need you to do, after you reflect, I need you to ask Jesus to reveal. Somebody say reveal. Ask him to reveal what those things are what those issues are, right? I mean, you want him to make this perfectly plain to you. I love the psalm writer. He said, see if there's any offensive way in me, right? We gotta be honest about this. Ask Jesus uh, to reveal it. But then here's the last thing that we need to do. Once we reflect and Jesus reveals, we gotta be willing to repent. Somebody say repent. Look at Psalm 139, the second part of verse 24 says, lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the way. And you know, when you ask Jesus to lead you, um, basically that is what repenting is all about. Because you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we walk by our own sight. 
we see some stuff and we're, we're kind of following our own plan. But when Jesus leads us, he taps us on the shoulder and be like, no, 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 no. I don't want you going this way. I want you going in this direction. And you know that word repent? Somebody say repent. That word repent literally means to make a 180 and go in a whole different direction than what you were walking in originally. That's my challenge for us. And some of you may feel like you are earnestly doing what you're supposed to be doing. But how many of you know sometimes we can have good intentions and good motives and we can be earnestly incorrect? Eric said it last week, maybe I'm wrong. So I want to encourage you guys to do these three things. Reflect, allow Jesus to reveal, and then repent. Before we close, um, I was wrong last week online. Our love offering is next weekend. And so I want to encourage you to be thinking about what that looks like for us to support um, our church down um, that was firebombed, uh, our kids uh, in Haiti, uh, our inner city youth that were serving the 40 families in the city of Chicago. Um, Pray you prepare your hearts for that gift. Amen. Amen. Church, will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you. It's a hard thing, God, to confess and admit where we're missing it. But God, I know every single person under the sound of my voice, they want to get this right. And we want to live out the entire gospel as we try to preach it here at Central Christian every single week. So help us, show us, God, where we're missing it. And I pray, Father God, that as we reflect, you will reveal. And as you reveal, God, we will repent. And then we would move appropriately, making right action steps towards redemption and recommitment. To our brothers. We want to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, and soul and strength. And we want to love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to do it. Your plan is unity. Help us to be unified. And what could happen if we all got together? The only person that stands to gain from us separate is the enemy. But you gain and the kingdom gains when we come together. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. We love you online. Hope to see you guys next week.